External inspections of safety valves are conducted when a problem is suspected and also when routine preventive maintenance or testing is scheduled. In this part, we'll see a typical external inspection and we'll look at hand lifting a valve when the external inspection indicates that certain problems may be present. In preparation for an external inspection, check the operating history of the valve. This will give you an idea of specific problems that you should watch out for during the inspection. Next, proceed with a step-by-step -step external examination of the different parts of the valve. For this two-ring huddling chamber safety valve, first check the lock wire on the adjusting ring pins. The lock wire is fastened in place with a metal clip as the final step in the valve reassembly procedure. So the presence of the metal clip is a sign that the adjusting rings should still be properly set for operation. If the metal clip is missing, or if the lock wire has been tampered with, the valve set points may not be correct. Then you must have the valve taken to the shop to check the adjusting ring positions and, if necessary, reset them. Check for signs of leakage or leak through at the discharge piping bolts and possibly around the yoke or bonnet bolts. Some valves have a yoke and a bonnet that are two connected pieces. Others, like this one, have a single piece that may be called either a yoke or a bonnet. For consistency, we'll use the term yoke. Also inspect the top or cap of the valve. Next, look for steam or warm condensate leakage around the drain plug and around the bolts on the yoke. Check the temperatures of the valve and the discharge piping. Another way to detect leakage is to check the exhaust pipe from the valve. When you make this check, be very careful not to place any part of your body over the exhaust path from the valve. If the valve were to lift unexpectedly, you could be severely injured. If steam is being discharged from the exhaust pipe, the valve is definitely leaking. An external inspection may reveal that a valve is leaking between the disc and the seat. This could occur if the valve didn't reseat correctly after the last time that it popped. Or it could be caused by foreign matter, such as ash, dirt, or rust particles trapped between the seat and the disc. In many cases, you can correct either of these two causes of leakage by manually lifting or hand lifting the valve. Hand lifting clears foreign matter out of the valve and gives the disc a chance to reseat properly. But any time a safety valve is lifted, there's a corresponding drop in system pressure. So before you hand lift a valve, notify the appropriate operating personnel so that they can compensate for the drop in system pressure and keep it from interfering with normal operations. If operating personnel aren't forewarned, when pressure drops as you hand lift the valve, they might take emergency measures to raise pressure or to shut down the system. Such actions could be costly and perhaps dangerous. Likewise, before hand lifting a valve, you must take appropriate personal safety precautions. Attaching a hook to the valve's release lever enables you to position yourself as far away from the valve as possible. This is important because when you hand lift the valve, a great deal of hot pressurized fluid could be released. To lift the valve, pull the hook hard enough to open the valve all the way. You should hold the valve open for only two or three seconds. If you hold it open any longer, the disc could be damaged by the rush of steam. After the valve closes, repeat the inspection procedure to check for leaks and more heat than would normally be expected after hand lifting. If the valve seats properly after lifting, it should start to cool down immediately. If the second inspection indicates that the problem wasn't solved by hand lifting the valve, or if hand lifting wasn't a possible solution for the initial problem, you'll need to follow your plant procedures to have the valve examined and the problem corrected. 